The troops here and across the world are fighting a global war on terror. The war reached our shores on September the 11th, 2001. The terrorists who attack us and the terrorists we face murder in the name of a totalitarian ideology that hates freedom, rejects tolerance, and despises all dissent. Their aim is to remake the Middle East in their own grim image of tyranny and oppression. By toppling governments, by driving us out of the region, and by exporting terror. Like most Americans, I see the images of violence and bloodshed. Every picture is horrifying, and the suffering is real. ...declaring that black Africans in Sudan are the victims of genocide. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Global peace. I think that's what all the people that I'm working with in East Africa, that's what they're longing for above all. And so I'm thinking, okay, film, and how film can influence peace, how culture can influence peace, and how all of us here in Florida, in the United States, can see films that help us understand what's going on in the world. To me, that's a step towards peace. You have to have respect for somebody else's opinion. And it's all about, you know, to, to me, it's all about respecting, uh, respecting other people's cultures, respecting other people's ideas, respecting other people's beliefs, respecting other people's philosophies, um, and sharing that with other people. So, so I see the festival as, as this big kind of um, flower bed with really rich soil and all the different films and all the different people who come to it are, diff are, are seeds that, you know, can get planted and can grow in that flower bed. Rollins College has played a really big part in the Global Peace Film Festival. They have not only allowed uh, the festival to come onto campus and show films there, but also they've had classes required to come see films about different topics and comment on them and basically what Rollins has done for us is it's created a real scene. It was great to see filmmakers hanging out there together waiting for the next film. They were in close proximity. Uh, so we had a lot of action going on at Rollins. They're a terrific partner of ours. We've decided this year to add a street fair and an international pet parade for peace just to bring people out get people talking about topics and, and to each other and getting some diversity, people involved. It was great. We had all kinds of different dogs from all different countries. And we've got a lot of wonderful nonprofits out here today. Code Pink has been making a statement for peace and, and in specifically for ending the war in Iraq now since even before the war started in uh, 2002. So now for, gosh, six years, more than six years, we've been wearing our pink, uh, other women all around the country have been wearing pink to make a statement and to be recognized as a group of women who want to see the war in Iraq end. You can make a difference and this was an inspiration for me and I think the visuals and the medium of film is an amazing medium that can engage people and make people want to stand up and do something and just tonight after seeing a film I've had four people come up and talk to me and say they want to get involved and they want to do something. It's a wonderful opportunity for everybody. You have films here from all over the world. You're giving people an international perspective. There's no way that anything like this is ever going to appear on HBO. It's just not going to happen. So what you're doing is you're telling people information. You're showing them aspects of the world they literally have no other way to find. I went to my first anti-war, well not my, it was my first anti-war protest for this war in 2002 in Central Park and I was I was stunned by how many young people were there. 
I mean, everywhere I looked, and I really felt like, hey, I'm, I'm a guy in my uh, mid-40s, and I felt like my generation dropped the ball. We really dropped the ball on all of this, and we got complacent during the Reagan years and the Bush years and all of that stuff. And, and when I looked around at these protests, and I went to several of them, and I saw these young people and how enthusiastic they were and how, how dedicated they were to this, and I thought, well, this is, you know, I want to be involved with these guys. And at the same time, this is the hope for the world, is, is the, uh, the youth of America now. You know, the fact that, like, our media is so um, discursive, you know, it's just so fragmented. It's just coming from everywhere at once. And so you can be very, very um, provoked by what you see, but then it's like, at the end of the day, how do you just pick one cause? You know, there's so much to do. So you have this idea, like, you're just overwhelmed. Like, what do I do? We're creating a lot of violence and destruction in the world. And I think we as Americans have to understand that. The way we are intervening in other cultures, the way we are stereotyping other cultures, we are creating a lot of violence. And so I think we need to own that responsibility. You know, it's all, it's all nice to say, oh, well, peace is wonderful, love is wonderful, hope is wonderful. What are we actually doing, you know? What are we doing in those other countries? What are our foreign policy, you know, what, what effect does our foreign policy have on other people? Uh, I think we need to take a good look at ourselves. There has to be this love of humanity, and you ha it has to be for everybody. <laughs> you can't make exceptions. You can't say, oh yes, well, I love you, but if only if you are true blue, you know, born in this country, American. But if you're coming here without documents, I don't love you, and I want you out of here. No, no, we're all on this planet. And all of us have the same aspirations, the same needs, the same desires. We need love, we need stability, we need security, and we need each other above all. So I would like people to think about peace as this interconnectedness of all humanity. Without exception, no exception, rather uh, race, class, religion, ethnicity, nationality, we are all one people. So think about that and I think you will make your own steps towards peace.